a question came in, and that is the use of guard columns. What's the deal with a guard column? Do I need one? Is it required? What's it for? So here's my feeling. A guard column, its job is to guard the analytical column. It is a short version of the analytical column. It should contain the same stationary phase, the same particle size, ideally same everything. And the, the, the philosophy is, if something bad's going to happen, let it happen to my cheap guard column instead of my expensive analytical column. So that's the philosophy behind guard columns. So the traditional approach would say, if your sample's dirty, if your sample might be dirty, if you're not sure if your sample's dirty, then let's go with the guard column. It's, it's, you know, it's insurance. Um, I'll take it a step further. And I will say that in my experience, I would say maybe 30% of the people in the world use guard columns. The other 70% of us do not. Uh, for most of my applications, I do not use guard columns. And it really would depend on, uh, on the sample. But uh, here, here's my feeling. What would make a column dirty? What would actually affect your HPLC column? The number one thing that's gonna affect your column is particulates. If you get particles on your column, they're gonna clog the frit and it's gonna cause problems. Uh, I'll deal with that one in a, in a later video. So uh, we need to make sure, step one, there are no particulates in your sample. I can accomplish that by using a syringe filter. So I'm a big fan of telling everybody, filter every sample through a, a 0.2 micron, 0.1 micron filter, syringe filter, before you put in your auto sampler and your column is gonna last a lot longer. So that's step one, let's get a particulates, uh, get rid of the particulates. What else could possibly damage my column? Well, there's not a whole lot of things out there um, except for we talk about the irreversibly adsorbed molecules. So things that stick to the column and never come off. Well, um, I guess in my world, uh, that's not that common anymore. Um, if something gets onto your C18 column, we could wash it off. We go to 100% acetonitrile, take the temperature up to 60 or 70 degrees and we're gonna wash off anything that gets on that column. So I'm not worried about irreversible adsorption, things getting on the column and never coming off. Um, to me, uh, if we just think about that more deeply, uh, what would that be? It would be a really, really nonpolar molecule. But my feeling is if your sample is dissolved in the mobile phase or something like the mobile phase, there's no way that would have gone into solution to begin with. So I think this is a fairly minor problem. So uh, my, my takeaway is I usually do not use guard columns. I'm not against them. Uh, they have their uh, place. And if you want to use them, keep going. I would never choose a guard column to improve my efficiency. I mean, technically, it adds some length, it adds some efficiency. That's not the reason to choose a guard column. Uh, the reason is to guard the analytical column. And my, uh, and my feeling is you could do that by syringe filtering every single sample uh, before you inject it. Uh, and then make sure your sample is soluble in the mobile phase or something close to it. And then you're going to be fine.